All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the afternoon session with the current status of lab-grown diamond in China and its future by Professor Andy Etchen, please. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure to be invited to give a talk in the GIT 2021. Unfortunately, uh, due to the COVID-19, I cannot be present there physically, even though I would love to come to Thailand to give this presentation. Um, but then on the other hand, I think uh, everyone has, uh, you know, facing this COVID-19 issue. So anyway, this is actually uh, far better than uh, than uh, risking the uh, uh, the COVID nineteen anyway. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the current status of lab grown diamond in China and its future. And first of all, I like to acknowledge my co-author, uh, Dr. Zhou Yuan. Uh, many of you in the audience probably know him. He has been working in the lab-grown diamond field for many years, especially in China, and he himself being one person, one uh, manufacturer. So that's probably uh, what he's known for. Okay, so with no further delay, let me go to the next slide. Sorry for this, this is kind of slow. Here we go. Okay, so the first slide I like to direct you to this uh, lab grown diamond report released by Bain and Company in 2019. In this diagram, it actually very nicely summarizes both the consumption part as well as the production of the, um, the lab grown diamonds. And in which they very, very clearly uh, illustrated four uh, important markets in the world. And first of all, let's look at the consumption side. Um, the US market is the largest uh, diamond consuming market in the world. Uh, it's also the largest uh, uh, lab grown diamond market as well. In 2018 or 2019, it consumes about 80% of the global consumption. It's in the US market. The second largest um, diamond market is in China. And it also consumes uh, the second largest uh, uh, lab grown diamond, which probably contributed to 10% of the consumption here. Um, India and the rest of the world, however, has contributed a very, very small amount of uh, uh, numbers in the uh, consum consumption of uh, lab grown diamonds, okay? And this diagram also shows what's the, the current uh, production. Now the production side, uh, US is also uh, high in the uh, production uh, using mainly the CBD technology. And the global production at the time estimated 10 to 15%. And whereas in China is probably the largest uh, uh, lab grown diamond uh, production in the world. And at that time, accounting for about 40 to 50% of the, uh, uh, both the industry and the, uh, and the uh, gem market. And this is mainly the technology they use uh, is the HPHT technology. And India, even though they don't consume that many uh, lab grown diamonds, but it produces quite a bit. It produces 15 to 20% of the global production and uh, mainly using the CBD technology. And let's look at the rest of the world. And that's probably the most important part is in Russia, in the UK and the uh, Singapore, um, but using both synthetic and H uh, using, I'm sorry, both uh, CBD and HPHT technology for producing um, the, the, the lab bone diamonds. The most important summary is probably right in the center, which I circled using the red box. Basically, at that time in 2019, they are estimating that the production growth will probably be 15 to 20% per annum with increasing focus on the larger 
size of over one carat, white, excellent cut uh, stones. And don't forget, this is actually before the COVID. So these values are still, these numbers are still to be um, uh, verified. And this is actually still ongoing. So before I go to the uh, actual situation in China in the, uh, in the production side, I like to review a little bit about uh, what's happening in the um, HPHT synthetic diamonds. And here, this diagram is a cubic press that's used um, by the um, Chinese uh, synthetic diamond manufacturers. And the and this is this is this can be operated by one person, okay. And let's go to see what the uh, a quick review of um, of the uh, synthetic con conditions. And this diagram probably mo a lot of them, a lot of you have seen this before, but I like to uh, quickly review this. Um, for diamonds to be synthesized, it has to be synthesized in the uh, uh, diamond stability field. And this is labeled in this uh, uh, white region. And the graphite is known to be stable in this um, uh, sort of uh, red region or the pink, re orange region. And the synthetic conditions of uh, HPHT condition, uh, HPHT methods is labeled in these two little fields. Okay. One is using catalytic uh, methods, which basically by adding uh, nickel or titanium into the uh, as a catalyst into the into the um, the synthetic uh, conditions, and not using the the catalyst, then you need to go to a much higher pressure and temperature, and this is the pressure and temperature for these uh, non catalytic uh, reactions would take place, and the catalytic conversion will be happening in a much uh, lower pressure and temperature range. So most of the manufacturers still go for the catalytic reactions, okay? Because the equipment for generating these non-catalytic uh, methods will uh, be a lot more expensive. Um, in comparison, the CVD diamonds are mostly high temperature and usually less than one ADM. So basically it's in a more in the vacuum conditions. And that's, that's shown in this little yellow region, okay? So, um, many of you probably have already been to these uh, Chinese manufacturing companies. And these are two companies, I'm not gonna name them, but um, um, I'll just call them, these are, uh, these are uh, different, different uh, factories, okay? And you can, in these factories, you can see these, um, um, you can see these uh, presses, or these um, uh, cube for, for, for synthesizing the uh, diamonds. And each of these factories will contain probably up to 50 to 100 of these presses, okay? And each of these companies will have more than whatever number of uh, factories they can, they, can, they can accommodate. And um, I'll give you some numbers later on, but you can you keep that in mind. These are the presses that's um, used for generating these synthetic diamonds, okay? And that includes industrial diamonds as well, okay? And um, if you go to these factories, you will see that there are only very few people in each of these factories were probably managed by five to 10 people, a group of five to 10 people, matter of fact, you know, uh, overseeing these presses. In 2017, when I first visited their uh, factories, and we're seeing a lot of these, um, you know, the, these are very fine diamond sands, okay? And to the various size of uh, synthetic diamonds, these are usually mostly for the, for the grinding materials. And that was the, the major, major manufacturing uh, uh, product, the productions. And at the same, at that time, they start growing some of these larger diamonds. Uh, these are the, the larger yellow diamonds, okay? But at the same time, they started to grow some of the uh, uh, white diamonds, okay? And these are smaller size white diamonds. 
and that's in the 2017 when when I first visited their uh, factories. This is what they show me um, in 2021, last year, and uh, you can see that there's a bunch of these colored diamond, and these are probably uh, using after uh, after growth, uh, post growth treatment. So you can see pink diamonds, yellow diamonds, green diamonds, and blue diamonds, and so forth and so forth. Okay. Um, it doesn't have a scale, but these diamonds are up to up to like half carats to 70 points. Okay. So there are actually decent sizes. Now, this one is what they recently showed me. Well, not, not recently. I think it's by the end of last year, they show me this. And the scale in the back is in centimeters, okay? So we're talking about these diamonds are probably up to 10, 15 centimeters in diameter. I mean, sorry, 10 to 15 millimeters in diameters, okay? So they're able to grow, you know, 20, 30 carats uh, rough stones or even bigger ones. And they are um, estimating that they will be able to grow even bigger diamonds um, fairly soon. Okay. So what's interesting is that, uh, so how about, what are these diamonds used for? Okay. There are many, many uh, users of the, the diamonds. So I look into um, some of the, uh, the, the intelligence uh, information. Uh, this is actually provided by uh, Mortar Intelligence. And you can see that the polished diamond market, and this is by revenue, okay? And you can see that the uh, jewelry application is actually fairly limited. And of course, that's in 2018, okay? And uh, at that time, these um, uh, lab-grown diamonds are mainly used by electronics, healthcare, and other many other material-related applications. Um, so basically, our business, our industry only takes up a very small portion of, um, of this uh, revenue share. And please keep that in mind. And this is, this is actually important for some of the later applications. Okay, so let's come to the, 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 the more interesting part. I think a lot of people are expecting this. <clears throat> And these numbers are, uh, gen are, are generously provided by um, Dr. Yuan. He has, oh, he has visited many of these companies. And the number, the names in red are Chinese manufacturers, okay? And this is only looking at, we're only looking at HPHT lab-grown diamond factories, okay? Zhongnan is the largest among, on the, among them all. Um, estimated total number of presses up to 4,500 presses. Among them, nine, uh, roughly 900 of them are committed to gemstone productions. Okay. Gem, gemmy, white, or yellow diamond productions. Okay. And then monthly uh, productions in carrots is uh, estimated up to 80,000 carrots per month. And Huang He Hora Wearing, I think a lot of people know about them. They're the second largest, and they have about uh, 4,000 presses altogether. And among them, 1,200 of them mm -hmm. are actually uh, committed to gemstone productions. And the estimated production is about 100,000 carats per month. Huajing is the third largest one. And basically, you have 2,000 presses altogether in the, in the company. And among them, 800 is committed to uh, gemstone production and uh, 70,000 carats uh, per, per month production rate. And the fourth largest is believed to be Liliang uh, diamonds. And they have total number of well, 600, but a third of them is actually in gemstone production. Estimated production rate, 20,000 carats per month. And there's a, there, there's a lot of uh, other companies. And actually, um, I have to make a claim, first of all, this list is nowhere to be comprehensive. It doesn't mean that we covered every single one of the uh, Chinese manufacturers or even the global manufacturers. There are many, many smaller uh, manufacturers. 
Okay, and these are uh, collected by uh, Dr. Joe Yuan, and I have added a couple of them. So, and also the other thing is that these, uh, the other claim is that these number of presses are estimated values. Um, maybe some of them are actually, as we visit there, that's what they have at that time, but maybe um, it has changed ever since. And these are very, very dynamic values and they can, they can change in, in, in any time. And of course, the final production rate here is on, I have to claim that it's basically what the company provided us. And we have no idea whether these are, we have no way to verify these values, okay? And one of the largest uh, production is in uh, Russia. The NDT, the New Diamond Technology, Russia, in St. Petersburg, they claim to have 4, 34 presses, and um, they're producing 3,000 carats per month. And NDT has a Ukraine branch, and Zimmer in Switzerland, they're also producing uh, HVHT lab-grown diamonds, okay? How about CVD? The CVD diamonds, there's, there's a lot of players. And I, I would have to say that the, mo the most important players in the jewelry market is in Singapore. Um, a, lot of, a lot of us actually know the 2A Technologies. They produces a lot of the CVD diamonds the gem market uh, for, for gem gemstone applications. There's Axe Diamonds as well. And these are the number, uh, number of uh, reactors, what they have. And probably the largest news is Element 6. Uh, that's the De Beers company. They, uh, they, um, they produce a light box. Now is actually settled in uh, Washington State in the United States. In the initial phase is uh, 550 reactors and they're expanding to hundreds of reactors. And of course, Diamond Foundry, that's make a lot of news because uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and all the other famous people. And Washington Diamonds is also producing, um, these are the three largest uh, synthetic uh, HP, I mean, CBD diamond producers in the US, okay? And Chatham Created is a, a very um, important brand in the synthetic, synthetic gemstone creator. Chatham used to grow um, color stone, and now they're starting to grow uh, CVD diamonds as well. Okay. And there's uh, companies in Switzerland, in Russia, and in Israel. Okay. And this is the, this is the factories uh, continued. Okay. And uh, China, there are actually a few of the companies, the four companies that's listed here. One is Zhengshi, uh, that's in Zhejiang province. They have, uh, they have about 100 reactors. And then Taoran has about 60. Samuo is in Zhengzhou, that's, uh, he's there with uh, Dr. Zhou, Ren, uh, Zhou Yuan. And then there's Jingzhuan. And that's uh, up to 550 reactors, probably by far the largest uh, Chinese CVD diamond producer. And we have a lot of um, producer in uh, India. And you can see the new diamond era and uh, has up to uh, 1500 reactors in carp. So the CVD diamonds are, the production uh, scale is probably much larger in, um, in India, then in comparison with uh, China. Okay, so what are these numbers are going to? Okay, um, so these each country where people estimated up to from the 2021 up to 2024, we're looking at a, a probably a expansion of sixfold in the uh, number of reactors. Okay, but again, these are all estimated values. And China is uh, taking aggressive expansion, and as well as China, as well as uh, U.S. is uh, expanding a lot too. And India is taking a fourfold expansion, so this is quite a bit here. And there are actually a few other things that's happening in China in other fronts now, other than the manufacturer. I'm just uh, giving you an introduction of what is happening in the uh, Chinese manufacturer. 
But at the same time, there are actually a lot of things that's happening too. The first thing is that the Chinese national standard, the GB series on gemstone naming has adopted the name, the term lab grown diamonds. And the final version is about to release. And honestly, I'm not the right person to ask because I'm not sitting on that committee. The right person to ask is for, for about this, this uh, final, final version is uh, Dr. Yang Lixin, who is also in presenting in this uh, conference. Now, the second thing is probably another important thing. There are voices among the Chinese lab-grown diamond manufacturers. And basically, they want to get united uh, by forming association or whatever methods. And by doing so, they want to increase their ability for pricing and sales, okay? And this is more related to business. So I am not directly involved in this, but I, that's what I heard. And of course, the Chinese consumers, especially the younger generations, are beginning to appreciate the lab-grown diamonds especially with those colored diamond that I just show you, okay? So uh, one of the little adv advertisement I'd like to do is that uh, because of this, uh, this uh, new form trend in lab-grown diamond, uh, our journal, the Journal of Gems and Gemology, that's in Chinese and in English, and this is the Chinese title uh, of the journal, and then this is the special issue that we have just published. And this is the Chinese, for those of you who recognize Chinese character and these, that's, you can read it directly. But basically we have uh, created, uh, uh, edited this uh, special issue on lab grown diamond, future star in gems and materials. Okay. And this is uh, a joint effort be between me and uh, Dr. Shan in uh, Zhengzhou University, who's a, a material scientist. Um, who edited, we edited this uh, uh, special um, edition. And just a quick review, and this is now available on the, on our, um, on the CNKI website. And then next month it will be available on our uh, uh, website, final website. And um, basically here, you can see the title. We have also people, uh, I have wrote an article here and then Dr. Zhou Yuan wrote an article here. And then uh, we have people from uh, GIA, Sally uh, wrote an article here. And we have people from INSEC, uh, France. Uh, this is from the uh, purely business side. And they, they, they put in their, they chip in their view uh, for the lab ground diamond and the, uh, uh, for in the luxury brands. Okay. So with this, come to the future. Um, this is probably a lot of people are very concerned and um, both Joe and I does not have a crystal ball so we can gaze into the future and know exactly what is going on. But there are small trends and small things that we notice and we think that it's happening. First of all, is that we both think that production of lab grown diamond will continue to grow, okay? The important reason is that it's not only for gemstone use only. It has the other applications in material science, in medical applications, in even the uh, environmental pollution, you know, the filtering, the processing, the uh, polluted water and all these things that's going on in the uh, technology side. So we think the lab grown diamond will continue to grow. Okay, that's the first thing. And the second thing, um, we both think that the natural diamond and the lab-grown diamond will probably and very likely to form two different markets. And basically, I think the, uh, we think that the uh, diamond markets may change into two um, sub-markets, if you, if, you, if, you, if you allow me to say that. One is the, the high-end natural diamonds. And then the lab grown diamond is probably going to take up some certain market shares. And the most important thing to do for us, uh, especially in gem testing, is that 
we need, we need to be able to keep continuing to uh, separating the natural the one, natural diamonds from the lab grown ones. Um, the ability for doing this is critical for any uh, any other future gem labs, because if we can, if we fail to uh, identify these two, it means that these markets will be completely messed up. So you know I think it's an opportunity, but also it's a, it's a strong challenge for any lab um, such as uh, GIT or GIA or our own lab and all these things. Okay, and the third trend, and probably we ga we're gazing into the future, is that uh, people in China are also talking about manufacturing using green energy, such as solar energy or wind energy and so forth. And um, there are actually even uh, more uh, creative thinkers are actually thinking of uh, extracting carbon from polluted airs, from atmosphere, in order to reverse the um, CO2 uh, increasing, the global warming and all that kind of issues. Um, we're talking about this is a very possible thing that's happening in, in, the, in the near future, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, that would be all I have to say. And thank you very much for listening. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see each other very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Professor Andy.